This is part 13. So that's pretty much it for the wiring harness. Now I'm going to move on to the putting on the air duct and the air cleaner box. Next I'm going to install this the bottom of this air box. And now I can put the air filter in. Now the top piece. Now I can fit this duct piece on to the air box. Uh, and on to the plenum of the throttle body. Behind the air duct is a little hose, so I'm just going to connect that now. Next I've got this air intake piece. Next, I've got the battery tray and coolant reservoir. And last but not least, the lid. Okay, now that I've got all the hoses and electrical wires connected, and I've got all the brackets, I've made sure everything's on. I've triple checked everything to make sure everything's connected. No hoses, no electrical wires are missing their partners. So now it's time to install the battery. I'm gonna orient my terminals with the positive on this side, because my positive wire comes up from this side. Okay, I'm gonna take my little battery terminal protectors off and connect the positive first. Now the negative. So I've got Brittany here, and now that I've got the battery hooked up, I'm just gonna turn it to the electric on so we can see if we get lights. I wanna do this before I fill it with coolant and oil, just to make sure that the electrical stuff will work. So go ahead, just to the on position. The alarm. Oh yeah. I forgot the alarm went off. So and the doors are locked. So you have to do that first. Okay, remember? yeah. I was like, what's going on here? Anti-theft system. That's two. 
Oh, oh we have shit. lights. I mean, we got a little bit of gas in there too. We got a quarter tank of gas. Okay. Now that I've tested for lights, I've gone ahead and put my little securing bracket on my battery. I just have it hand tight for now so that I can do the startup. So I'm about to start putting some new coolant in the radiator. But before I do that, I'm just gonna loosen up this uh, bleed valve on these hoses here. That'll help get the air out of the system. So now I got my funnel set up and I've got my bleed valves open. I'm just going to start adding water to the radiator. One thing you can do to kind of get it to flow through is just squeeze the radiator tubes. See now I've got all the air bleeded out of my system and the water is at the level of the radiator cap. That's what I want. Now I'm about to add fresh engine oil. I had 1.5 liters in that green container. And I'm gonna add four liters from this container. Capacity is 4.9 liters. But I don't wanna overfill it, so I'm just gonna to go to 4.5. Are you gonna test it? Or no, because we're ready. So we're about to get ready to do the first startup, but I'm gonna check one last thing, which is the battery standing voltage. I wanna check it so that once it's started, I can check the voltage again to see if the alternator is actually supplying power. So we're at 12.43 volts. Looks like the rain's coming. So Brittany's in the car. She's going to do the honors of starting it. And I'm just going to be out here to make sure everything is going smoothly. And I'm going to have to retop up the radiator as coolant en enters the engine when the thermostat opens. I think, I think we're ready. Oh my gosh, hold my hand. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> ready? Yeah. <laughs> try again. Yeah, try again. <laughs> yeah, try again.
14.24 volts. That means the battery is charging from the alternator. Okay, so now that we know that she runs, I'm going to do a flush of the coolant system. And to clean it out, I'm just going to use the rest of this vinegar that I got. I drain the radiator and I'm about to fill it back up with a vinegar and water solution and then turn it on and run it and then flush out the coolant system. So I've run the vinegar solution in the engine. I got it up to operating temperature and revved it to like 2500 RPM for a little while just to flow that solution through the engine. And then I let it sit overnight and now I'm about to flush it. But first I have to take out the uh, thermostat which is right down here. See right here is the thermostat. Ooh. Now I'm going to reconnect this radiator hose just so I can do the flush. So I've just got it on here hand tight for now just so I can run water through here. So I've taken off the lower radiator hose from the lower part of the radiator down there. And then I've got the upper radiator hose disconnected right here. And now I'm going to run the, the hose through this side. So now I've got my hose. I'm just going to press this on here. Once the water runs through clean, I reattached my radiator hoses and put back in my thermostat. Now to flush the city water that got into the coolant system out of here, I filled this up with clean water and then ran it, let it get to operating temperature, and then turned it off, let it cool down, drained the radiator, and refilled it with clean water. I did that about four or five times just to get clean water in here. And then I know when I drain my radiator, I have about a gallon left in the system. So next, what I added was a gallon of antifreeze. So that way I have a 50-50 mixture in here. And then after I added the antifreeze, I ran it just to mix it all up. So I'm just gonna top her back up. I also topped up the coolant reservoir with a 50-50 mixture, so everything's good to go. So now what I want to do is just kind of explain what I accomplished by doing all of this work. So while the head gaskets didn't really show any signs of being blown, it was actually necessary to take off the heads because I discovered that the cylinder 3, one of our exhaust ports, was all gunked up with burnt oil and so after discovering that I cleaned that out but the blockage in the cylinder 3 exhaust port was likely causing our cylinder 3 misfire but what caused that gunked up oil inside the exhaust port was bad valve stem seals there was actually oil trickling down the valves and burning which was actually going to probably cause blockages in multiple cylinders, but I was able to change the valve stem seals. 
So that fixed that issue. Also, we were having a random multiple misfire, and that was being caused by bad spark plug well seals. Oil was actually getting down into the spark plug wells and getting onto the spark plugs and gunking them up. So that was probably the cause of the random multiple misfire. And also the visible leak from the valve covers. I fixed that by adding a new valve cover gasket. Also, we had a crankshaft position sensor circuit error. So I fixed that by replacing the crankshaft position sensor. Ours was actually physically damaged, so there wasn't any problem with wiring or anything. It was actually the sensor. And then lastly, we had a O2 sensor heater circuit error, which I fixed by replacing the bank 2 sensor to O2 sensor. We've driven her about 58 miles since the repair and everything's been going pretty smoothly and she starts up pretty good. She's got a few old pulleys so she squeaks a little bit but um, those will be fixed pretty soon. So in total, in new parts, she has new spark plugs, new spark plug wires, new O2 sensor, new timing belt, new timing belt tensioner pulley, a new timing belt idler pulley, a new water pump and gasket, crankshaft position sensor, valve stem seals, cylinder head gaskets, cylinder head bolts, valve cover and spark plug tube gaskets, exhaust manifold gaskets, intake manifold and plenum gaskets, EGR pipe gasket, coolant pipe o-rings, radiator cap, and battery. So and now for the cost analysis. To do the cost analysis I went to repairpal.com and I tried to find uh, as many uh, repairs that were related to what I did as I could. So I got estimates for spark plugs and wires, upper intake manifold gasket, lower intake manifold gasket, left exhaust manifold gasket, right exhaust manifold gasket, left valve cover gasket, right valve cover gasket, water pump, timing belt replacement, and head gasket. And the totals for all those repairs, there was a low value, which was about 4900 and then the high value was about 6600 uh, including parts and labor and what I spent I broke it into two categories I broke it into parts and tools because for me the parts are kind of the real expense and the tools are sort of an investment because now I can use those tools later to repair anything else and it'll save me money in the future so for the parts we spent about six hundred and forty dollars and then the total for the tools is we spent about $581. So the total cost of this whole repair was about $1,200 for us. So when you take the difference from what I got from RepairPal.com and what we spent on this repair, we saved about anywhere from $3,700 to $5,500 if I would have taken it to a mechanic. And now that I've spent the money and gotten the tools that I needed to take basically the entire engine apart, I can do a lot of major repairs on my car in the future so I can save money even on something as simple as an oil change. I can do all my own oil changes now and I can do all the basic maintenance now which will save me money. This concludes the Montero repair series. I hope this was helpful in some way. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for an update on how she's running.